This is a quick walkthrough of the syntax challenge for Turtle Island. If you're planning to demonstrate this to your students, start by putting yourself into creative mode so that you can fly over the wall over here. You can press this button to teleport yourself to the challenge area. In the chest there will be some blocks, a good chance to talk about how those work. Place one right on this home block here, or any other spot in the world where you see one of those. Uh, there are going to be some assistant turtles throughout this challenge. Anytime you see an assistant turtle, you can just run the program that's already on there. Although sometimes they might not work until uh, a certain condition has been met. So this one has a pretty simple program just designed to open the door for us. And how that worked is it broke a piece of sand that was actually transmitting that redstone signal back there behind the wall. So now that the signal has been broken, the pistons uh, close and the path has been cleared. In the chest you'll find three things. Program disc, a book entitled Hungry, and a digging turtle just in case you don't already have one. Um, in case you don't figure out what to do with the disc, the book tells you. Um, these program discs can be eaten, just like food. Um, so you hold it in your hand and right click on it with the mouse button. And what that does is it'll load a program into your turtle's library. So for some of these challenges in here, it's simply a matter of putting the turtle down and right clicking on it, and then finding that new program in your library and running it. So this one's gonna move forward, dig down, and move forward in some kind of a sequence. So what's it gonna do? Well, just like before, there is some sand that's transmitting that redstone signal to the pistons. And if we can dig up all that sand, it should open the way back towards those blue blocks in the distance. So let's run the program and see how it works. Pretty simple. Uh, you can go through now, but it's better to come and try to find a way to get your turtle. This is not a build allow block, so you won't be able to use a pickaxe even if you brought one. Uh, but if you use the assistant program here, it will dig up your turtle and spit it out. Uh, it'll also give you a new book that is entitled uh, Sequences. Oh, sorry, wrong book. This one here explains uh, a concept that we just learned. So uh, one action leading directly to the next. No actions are ever skipped. So uh, first little vocabulary word for the syntax area. And really it's the type of programs that most students will have been writing up to this point. Now we can head through here. We're not going to be able to open up the door without a little bit of help. There is a build allow block and at this point in the world students will probably guess that they should put their turtle down here. Uh, not much to do with this one except just to run the assistant program. This is will only work if there's something there to dig. So it's telling you to place your turtle in front and then the turtle will open the door for you. So we can run that program and see how it works. We walk through the door and in the chest we'll find that our turtle is sitting there waiting for us. I've got quite a few here because I think I'm actually still in creative mode. Uh, I'll just store those here for now. Uh, we got a new disc called uh, Loop Example, so uh, let's have a taste and see what that looks like. Okay, now it's going to get pretty dark through here, uh, but there's a simple piston, piston mechanism up here that you can activate by pulling the lever. Uh, so go ahead and pull that, and then take a walk over this way. Now, most students will be able to guess what the point of this challenge is. It's similar to before, except we're going to uh, turn on all of these lamps. Uh, and the way it works, well, we have a, a hopper here filled with redstone blocks. As soon as you place your turtle there, it's actually going to start filling up with those blocks. So that should happen automatically. Um, if we check the program, we have uh, a new one called Loop Example. So let's see what that does. It's going to place up and move forward. And we have this new syntax here. A uh, couple new blocks of code that we haven't used before. Repeat 12 times do and end. What's important about this is that these have to be used in the same order. So it always has to start with repeat and then some kind of a, f of a number or a phrase that is equivalent to a number and the, wor and the word do. And the word do in this case is going to indicate the beginning of the loop. And the word end is going to indicate the end of the loop. So these two commands here are going to be repeated 12 times. 
going to place a block up and move forward, lighting the path along the way. And if you've been following along so far, it should be no surprise what to do next. We'll just run the assistant program and that should clear us to the next area. In the chest, we take our turtle back. We have a new disc. This one is a loop template. Uh, my intention here is to make this a little bit more interactive. So this program will not work on its own. You have to make one small change to it. Uh, what do we have here in the hopper? Six. Uh, redstone blocks that should be going into slot one. The hopper should make that happen automatically, but it's always good to double check. Uh, the new program looks like this, and uh, if it's not entirely obvious, there is an empty spot here uh, and a comment that says that you should add one more command here. So we've got to think a little bit. We're going to repeat something six times, and moving forward probably is not enough to light up all these blocks. So what else do you think we need to do? Well, we've got those redstone blocks, so why don't we try placing them down? We'll take a place command and specify that we want to place it down. And run the program. All right, now from here, we can again use the assistant program. The assistant will turn back around and open the door for us. If you're curious about the redstone stuff here, it's a simple uh, AND gate, which is just making sure that um, that this part has actually been completed. So um, the assistant will not actually open the door if a student has never placed uh, any redstone blocks down. New book, it's about loops. So um, at this point now we've actually run two programs with loops and it explains a little bit about what that word means. Moving on next floor of the building we have a chest and a new disc with something called a while loop example in it and another book uh, about loops number two so let's take a look at that book what if you don't know how many times to repeat so a while loop is something that's a little bit more complicated than the repeat loop because you have to specify some kind of condition for the loop to check as long as that condition is true it's going to keep doing the actions in the loop and as soon as it uh, checks that condition and finds that it's false it's going to break out of the loop and continue with the rest of the program so we can uh, run that program we can uh, <laughs> eat that disk which will load it into our library now this this turtle here is actually a demo turtle so uh, even if we didn't do that it'll all be set up with the uh, it'll already be set up with the while loop example so what's this going to do uh, instead of repeat, we have while, and instead of a number of times, we have this condition here that it's going to be checking for. So basically, we're checking, we're inspecting the block that's in front of the turtle and checking to see if that block is equal to sand. And as long as it is, it's going to dig. Uh, and if it's if it's not, it's not going to to do that at all. So uh, right now, there's no sand in front of it, so nothing's going to happen. Um, is worth noting that there's a little bit of a hidden code here that's just going to do a little uh, bit of an extra step which will uh, try to put some sand into the chest but um, in order to do that we have to get some sand here so that's what this command block is for we can place some sand if we run this program now it will dig up that sand it's stored in the chest um, if you want to experiment with this a little bit more we could try placing two blocks of sand what do you think will happen? Well, the while loop is going to make sure that as long as there's sand there, it just continues to dig. So this would work with two blocks of sand just as well. We could even push it to the limits um, and try placing as much sand as we can. So let's fill it right up. Maybe even one more. So without even having to count the sand, we know that this loop will work because it's just going to check that condition over and over again. And while the block in front of it is sand, it's going to dig. Now the pistons have closed here. Uh, in order for us to move on, we're actually going to need to take the sand out of the chest. A little trick just to make sure that people actually uh, do get this turtle to dig up at least one block of sand before they try to move on. Uh, okay, let's place our turtle down here. Let's see what's in the chest. A while loop template, which means again that we're going to have to add something to this program in order for it to work. So, 
you can probably guess that the, the point here is to dig through the dirt this time uh, and probably to move forward as well. Um, we don't know exactly how much dirt there is here, so uh, we can't just repeat this a certain number of times either once we figure out the sequence. So let's see what the uh, template looks like. Okay, we have a while loop and it's checking for a certain kind of, well, it's blank. Uh, we have a pattern that's going to be repeated, hopefully, digging, moving forward and digging up, but we need to put something here. Uh, if it's not obvious, we're going to add a block here so we get to choose any type of block we want. The command for that looks like this and we can simply type in the name of the block we want. So if I, if I made a mistake and put in stone or something, this program won't do anything, but if I choose the correct block, dirt, and press OK and run it, it will dig all the way through the dirt. What do you think will happen when it gets to the clay? Well, it's just going to stop because it'll no longer be inspecting dirt there. We can move on, but there's also a little extra uh, program in Turtle right over here and its name is Easily Amused. So let's run that and see what it does. While we're doing that, we can take a look at this infinite loop program. That's a copy of the same program that that turtle's running. And we can read the book about infinite loops. An infinite loop is generally not a great practice to make in computer science, uh, but it is worth knowing how they work. Um, if you have a condition that's always true, the loop will just keep going on and on forever, such as with this program. Let's see how the program works. Instead of saying something like while detecting sand, we have while 1 plus 1 equals 2. Uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2 is always true, which means this is just going to keep going forever and ever and ever. Uh, this is kind of a silly example of a, of a while loop, but it's just to demonstrate that um, we're putting something here that's, that's always true. We could write um, while 1 equals 1. We could write while true do, because the word true itself is, of course, always true. Probably the most common way you'll see uh, an infinite loop is while true do. Um, but you can get creative with it. Generally, it's a good idea to stop an infinite loop before you go on. Otherwise, the server is going to have to uh, continue processing that turtle's program. Got to run the assistant program to move on. Perhaps we can't. Ah, it's running the wrong program. I, I'll go ahead and update that in the map before I share this. Uh, it should be running the door opener program. That should not happen to you, but uh, if it does, now you know why. Take the turtle out and grab this new conditional example. Okay, so we place the turtle here and let's take a look at the program first. Okay, we have a loop on the outside here. It's going to repeat something 10 times and what's it going to do? Well, if it detects grass, then it's going to dig it up. And that's all there is happening here. It's also going to move forward. And this is kind of important to explain this in a way that makes sense. We have two steps to the loop. The first is a check for, for grass, uh, and the second is to move forward. So that would be the sequence, but this, these, this is really the first program we've seen where not every command will necessarily happen in the same order. So typically like with any kind of a loop all or or just a regular sequence program we're going to have one action and then the other. Um, if we want the program to do different things in different situations an if block is a really good way to do that. So um, sometimes the dig command might get skipped altogether while it's repeating um, this sequence ten times. Um, so sometimes if it doesn't detect grass it's just going to move forward. So let's see what that looks like.
when you start writing programs for, for computercraft edu you probably won't use a whole lot of if statements or conditional statements uh, it's much simpler just to think about like the the main actions you'd want to repeat uh, but in a real minecraft world with a terrain that's so variable and unpredictable having if statements throughout your code allows it to be uh, much more effective and much more flexible such as by this example if we were mining and there were some gaps in the path ahead uh, we could fill those gaps with a with an if block. In this case, I think we're going to be filling it with grass blocks. Um, if we tried to place down a block in every single position, the turtle's going to crash as soon as it starts because it doesn't need to do it all the time. It only needs to do it uh, when there's nothing below it. So let's take a look at the uh, template and uh, see how that works. Oh, where is the template? Perhaps the template is missing. I'll fix that as well. Uh, the intended program for this one uh, is largely the same, except we're going to be inspecting down. And if um, and we're not going to be checking for for grass, we'll check for air. So if that block below it doesn't exist, if it's air, we can place a block down and then move forward. And then we can run the assistance program. The last one actually in this area. Okay, the final area is up ahead and it's just one last program just to kind of demonstrate uh, the power of using a couple lines of code to make something uh, quite complicated. So it's about four loops. Now, for the lessons that I teach with Computercraft EDU, I don't necessarily go into for loops with everybody, uh, but it's good to know that they exist and to kind of see some of the potential of using them. So you can talk about this program to whatever extent you feel comfortable uh, and then show them what it does. So when you run this program, first thing it does is it clears out that redstone, which is your key to, to exit the room and, and move on. Uh, but then it will start constructing this roof. So it is repeating, it's repeating that pattern four times, but it's also going to do it again in a slightly different way. So for the second iteration, you're going to see it's going to reposition itself and then do the same type of movement, but uh, in a, sh a shorter way. So that's how the, the, what the for loop is enabling us to do. So it's going to make kind of a pyramid shaped roof. Anyway, I hope this is helpful for explaining or walking through the syntax area of Turtle Island. Uh, if there's any other way that I can help, feel free to leave a comment on the video. Um, I do recognize that there might be some parts of this that are a little bit buggy or not intuitively obvious. Um, if your students run into trouble with into, into trouble with it, don't hesitate just to you know move them on or, or make the whole thing optional. Anyway, let me know what you think, or feel free to let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.